Hey there, and welcome to this Svelte tutorial all about using props in Svelte. Let's find out what props are, why to use them, and how to use them in Svelte. So here I already have a basic Svelte project up and running, and I'm in my app.svelte file. On the left is my browser, and what I'm showing here is just the very basic sort of developer portfolio. So in a typical developer portfolio, you would see kind of a list of projects, right? These would be like cards, and each one would have the information related to that specific project. So the first one is a to-do app, the second one is an e-commerce app, and so on. And we can put, let's say, an image in this project. We could put a description, and each one of them can have a unique background color. So usually with HTML, you would create it like this, right, where you would have a div for each project, and then inside of each div, you would have, let's say, an H2 with the title of that project. You would have a paragraph tag, maybe with a description. And you can see that we're doing the same thing for each one of these divs. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to create this chunk of code as a component. And that way, we don't have to be duplicating all this code like we're doing here. All right? That's the whole idea of components. They can be reusable. However, with components, we want to be able to pass in some data to each of those components. And that data is what's going to be unique to each component, like the title and the description and the background color. And the way we're going to do that is with props. So rather than creating all my markup in this way, what I've done is I've already created a folder called components. And this is optional. This is just an organizational thing you can do. But inside of that components folder, I created a file for a component that I called project.svelte. And that component is going to represent each project. So let's go ahead and open up that file. And you can see here that I've already got some minimal code typed out. The first thing, though, that I want to do is actually import this project component into app.svelte. So let's start by getting rid of everything we have currently in app.svelte. And let's create some script tags at the top to import project.svelte. So we'll say import project from, and then we'll go into our components folder, and we'll get project.svelte. And then in order to actually use that in our markup, we're going to bring it in like this. And we don't actually have any content yet in a project, so that's why we're just seeing this line here. But that's what we're going to do next. We're going to pass this project div some props, which are going to be the content that lives inside of each project. So first things first, now that we have this basic component created, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an array of data. And this is going to be an array of projects. And you can see that each project is an object with a project number, a title, a description, and a background color. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through this array of projects. And for each project, we're going to output a project component. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's use Svelte's each loop. And we can say each projects as project. And then first of all, we'll just close out that loop. And then inside of the loop, we're going to output a project component. All right? So now we have three of them, as you can see, because the length of our array is three. The thing is, each time we output a project component, we also want to pass it all the data from the object that's associated with it. And to do that, we want to use props. So let's go ahead and set that up. In our project component, first thing we're going to do, we'll come into our markup. And let's kind of organize our markup how we want things to display. So let's say, first of all, we want to display the project number and the title. So let's have an h2 tag. And inside of that, first of all, we'll do a span. And we're going to have a variable called num. And this is going to be a prop that we pass in. And we're going to do that in a second. So let's say project num. And then here, let's also output the project title. And that's going to come in as a prop under the name title. Then under that, let's output a description as a paragraph tag. And that'll be a prop called description. And then for the style of each of these project components, we want their background color to be the style of the background color prop that's passed in. So we can say style equals, and then we'll say background color is going to be the prop called bg color. 
So at the moment, you can see that our project.svelte file is red, meaning we have errors in this file. And that's because we have to actually export all these variables as props. So inside of our script tags, we're going to use the export keyword. And we're going to say, first of all, export let bg color is going to be one of the props. Then we're also going to have num as a prop. We're going to export title as a prop. And finally, we're going to export description as a prop. Now, if I save, you can see those errors go away. And in the browser, we now see undefined, undefined, undefined. And that's because we're using the props here, but we need to pass in their values here in the app.svelte parent component. So here you can see that there's sort of a parent-child relationship between the app.svelte file and the project.svelte file. The app.svelte file, which is the parent component, is rendering the child project component. And the app.svelte file is the one that actually has the state. The project.svelte file, you can say, is sort of a dumb component. Its only job really is to render that state onto the page. So in order to get the data that it needs, we need to pass in the various properties from the project's array into each project component as props. Now, the way to pass in a prop to a component is by using an attribute. And we put the name of the prop. So let's say that we wanted to do background color. That prop is called BG color, right? That's what's being exported here from the child component. And first of all, one thing we could do is we could just set it to a static value. So I can say BG color is going to equal red. And now you can see that all the child components are getting the background color of red due to this prop that's being passed in. However, what we want to do for each of the child components is have their background color be the background color coming off of their objects. So to do that, we can set the value of the prop as a dynamic variable. And we can say project.bg color is a property. And now you can see they're each getting a different color. And let's make this a little wider, just so the content doesn't overflow. So now that we have the background color, let's bring in the number, the title, and the description. So we can go ahead in the same manner. And next, we'll use the num prop. And we'll set its value to be project.num. And then we'll do title. Title prop is going to equal project.title. And then finally, let's make a new line. And let's say description is going to equal project.description. Now, if I save, you can see that each project gets updated with its own unique specific data. And of course, I haven't styled this in a very nice way, but still you get the point of how props are being used here. Now, one thing you probably noticed is that putting all these props in in this way is kind of long-winded. And just imagine if we had like 10 more props. Right, there'd be a whole lot of stuff going on here with these attributes. So rather than doing it this way, let's comment this out. And instead, we can do it in this way. Let's have a project component. And inside of curly braces, we can just use the spread operator and pass in the entire object. And then if we save, you can see we're getting exactly the same result. And so this is a much cleaner and terse way of doing the exact same thing that we had done up here. Now, there can also be a case where we're trying to use a prop, but we don't actually have the value from that prop coming into the component. So for example, let's say that we got rid of this BG color in each of the objects. And so now if I save, you can see that there are no background colors for any of the project cards. However, what we could do is we can give a default value here in the child component. And let's say that a default could be beige for the background color. And now we get beige for each card. So you can set default values in this way for any of the props that you create. So if you want to take your web development skills to the next level, check out the Code Creative Store for courses and free content. I'm going to leave a link for you in the description and the comment sections down below. Also, drop me a comment and let me know if you've tried Svelte yet, or if you're planning on giving it a try. See you next time.